Hi there and welcome to another of the Ash PE screencasts and in this the final of the energy system series we'll be looking at the aerobic energy system. Alright so let's get started straight away. So again what we're talking about is adenosine and how we're going to resynthesize um, the phosphates to allow us to have adenosine triphosphate. So for the um, aerobic system what we have is three main stages and we'll work through these in a little bit more detail obviously but just for now let's note that we have the aerobic glycolysis which allows us to have a yield of uh, two phosphates and then the Krebs cycle which allows us to have two more and then the electron transport chain which gives us 34. So we need to come up with 38 moles uh, of phosphates to, um, to finish off. So let's see how we're going to get those. First of all, let's just uh, recognize where we are to start with and we'll have a look at the glycolytic system. So that's where we should have left off. So what we've got is a buildup of adenosine diphosphate. So whenever we get the adenosine diphosphate building up, this triggers the release of the um, enzyme phosphofructokinase, which catalyzes the breakdown of the next available fuel, which is glucose. So that's a, it's a very energy rich molecule. Uh, in the bloodstream, but if glucose levels dip, then glycogen phosphate um, or the GPP, an enzyme which catalyzes the breakdown of stored glycogen in the muscles and liver, is actually released. So that allows us then to have a greater uh, increase in the glucose that we'd actually have within our blood. Now, the breakdown of glucose in the absence of oxygen is through a process called anaerobic glycolysis. And the result of that is the production of this, which is pyruvic acid. So for every one mole of glucose broken down, there's a net gain of about two moles of ATP. And the other thing is it can provide energies, as you probably know, for activities like the 200 or 400, um, something like 100 meter freestyle. Um, all of those are really good examples of uh, what's, what this system would be used for. Now, it's usually recognised as lasting for about three minutes, although its efficiency peaks around about a minute and then slowly decreases. So as the uh, high-intensity oxygen is not available to continue the energy extraction from the pyruvic acid, then lactodehydrogenase, or LDH, is released, and this enzyme, which uh, catalyzes the conversion of acid into... Yeah, you got it, is lactic acid. So that accumulates and then slows down the ATP resynthesis. So what we need to do is then look at our next system, uh, which is our aerobic system, and work out how that's going to enhance our ability to carry on working. All right, so let's have a look at the next one. So what I've done here, uh, I've just skipped forward a little bit. Um, principally, this is exactly what you've just seen, but if we have no oxygen present, then the pyruvic acid will um, be converted into lactic acid. But if we have oxygen present, then the, the, um, the process that's uh, associated with the pyruvic acid there is going to change. So it's exactly the same as before, that we have aerobic glycolysis is taking place in the sarcoplasm. It converts um, the glucose and uh, into the pyruvic acid and that's obviously with the enzyme phosphofructokinase catalyzing the, the reaction. This releases enough energy for the two moles of ATP and converts the glycogen into glucose which is fine. But what we have now is, is a sufficient energy supply for the pyruvic acid. So as that's the case it's no longer converted into lactic acid. It goes to a link uh, reaction catalyzed by this enzyme, which is coenzyme A. And that produces acetylcholine A. Now, the interesting thing about that is that allows us to, to access the powerhouse of the cell, which is the mitochondria. So what we need to note is all of the different components of the stage, what the, uh, the enzymes are, and what's the outcome. So from here, we've got our two moles and you need to also recognize that phosphofructokinase uh, and then glycogen phosphophilase are the two enzymes. So for stage one, what do we actually get out of it? And it's acetylcholine A. So what do you get from it? Moles, acetylcholine, and what are the, uh, the enzymes that are linked to it as well? There's the important information from it. If you don't get anything else, hopefully you will, but let's just move on. 
All right, so then what we do is we're, we're now accessing uh, the mitochondria, and this is the cell uh, that has the structure, so, so the structure within the cell where aerobic respiration and energy production is going to take place. Um, all right, so we're into stage two. So this is known as the Krebs cycle, and this is quite an interesting one. So this is where we get four things from the Krebs cycle. So you get a, uh, a cetacoline A, that's what we got from stage one. So that combines with oxalacetic acid to form citric acid, which is then oxidized through a cycle of reactions known as the Krebs cycle. Now, from this, what you need to understand is that you get four things from the Krebs cycle. So the first thing that you get is CO2. So that's one of our byproducts. Now, the next thing we'll get is the hydrogens, but we'll come to that again in a minute. Another thing that we'll get is a yield of two moles. So note that down. And then the other thing that we'll get is more oxalacetic acid. OK, and that allows this process to continue. Because if you had acetylcholine A but no oxalacetic acid, it can't be converted into citric acid. And then this process won't be taking place. It's as simple as that. So um, from here, note what you're going to get from it, which is your two moles and your four other, uh, so your four components in total. And the thing that we're taking from stage two is your hydrogens. Okay, so this next stage is a little bit more complicated, but we'll see how we get on. So the hydrogen atoms are carried through the electron transport chain alongside, uh, along the, 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 actually it's the folds of the inner membrane of the mitochondria by NAD and FAD. And these are hydrogen carriers and they're split into ions and electrons. So the hydrogen ions are oxidized. Um, so, so what you get is NADHA and FADHA, and then they go through the electron transport chain. So the hydrogen ions are oxidized and removed as H2O, but pairs of hydrogen ions um, actually give us a, a resynthesis and release enough energy to resynthesize 30 moles of ATP. So think about that comparatively to all of the other energy systems that we've got. So this is the Mac Daddy of resynthesis to give us 30 moles. And those are carried, uh, but uh, those are carried also um, by the, the FAD. They get a yield as well. So we haven't even finished there. So let's just work through it again. So you've got NADHA and FADHA, which are the hydrogen carriers, which take, uh, take our hydrogen ions and electrons through the electron transport chain and then they will give us 30, uh, 30 ATP there but we will also get from the electrons another four so we get 34 from this third stage which is a huge yield okay so let's move on so in essence what we've got is an increase in ADP uh, which we know will um, um, be catalyzed by the enzymes. So we get a breakdown of the glycogen into glucose and then uh, phosphoproctokinase is also uh, one of the catalysts for this whole system as well. But without the oxygen, we get the peruvic acid. So this is our aerobic glycolysis stage, isn't it? And that gives us a yield of two phosphates. Okay, so that's fine. That's the first component. And then if we do have the presence of oxygen, then we have the Krebs cycle, which gives us the hydrogens and then the hydrogens will then enter the electron transport chain, which will give us our yield of CO2, H2O, and 34 extra ATP for the resynthesis cycle. Okay, so you're probably going to need to go back over that. Appreciate that. That's relatively quickly. But if you have a look at the other videos as well, and then um, I'm sure the terminology will, will seem relatively straightforward, and um, we will then move on. So what you also need to be able to do is this. I think this is really important. If you can do this, then you've nailed it. Simple as that. So first and foremost, what you've got to do is identify each one of these aspects. So what's the site of the reaction? Where do these things actually take place? So what's the food or fuel that's being used? The controlling enzymes. And then what's the yield? What that means is how many ATP are you actually going to get? So what's the specific stage? So make sure you can name each one of the three stages. And then what's the byproduct? Um, from each one of those um, and how long can this system actually work for excuse me and then what's the intensity that you're able to work at so 
go back over the screencast and then try and identify the answers to these questions here. And if you can do that, then you've, you've got it pretty much. All right. Because then you will be able to describe as well as explain each uh, of the stages of the aerobic system. So there we go. Now let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages. First and foremost, it's got a large potential for glycogen stores and um, accessing that availability of the efficient uh, energy fuel. Um, provides energy for low to moderate intense uh, exercise for a long duration. So three minutes up to an hour. I know it can go a lot longer, but they're saying um, this is a, a, is a pretty decent guide. Almost anyone can go for about an hour at a low to moderate intensity. I say almost anyone, okay? Uh, there's no fatiguing byproduct. So if you think about it, other than obviously you're getting actually tired if you're doing a lot of work, the byproducts are only CO2 and H2O, which are very easily removed. All right, but then there are some disadvantages. Because of the complexity and the length of the process, it's a slow rate of ATP resynthesis, hence the fact you can't work too quickly and use this system, because it just won't work. It needs a lot of time. Uh, it requires O2, um, so you can't use it instantaneously. You, you have to wait for the O2 supply to be there. Uh, and it's obviously more complex series of reactions than we had in the other ones. And there is a limited energy for ATP during high intensity, short duration work. So in essence, the key points of this aerobic system are that it's used to create phosphate for ATP resynthesis. That's what its job is. Splits into three stages, aerobic glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. The aerobic glycolysis, the same reactions as the lactic acid, but what you've got is the presence of oxygen to remove. I say remove the lactic acid, I think I could have put a better term than that, but it's the conversion of the peruvic acid, isn't it? And then the energy system is used for long durations, low intensity and can last for hours. All right. So... And that's the end of the screencast. Um, do go back over it, as I said, and then make sure you can identify those key components that, um, that I highlighted on that table. I think if you can do that, you've got a very strong start to your session. Uh, okay, thanks very much, and I'll speak to you soon.